Shalom Rastafari Greetings No, 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 I'm just about to get into it. Rastafari. This is a little sample of um one of the hardest um uh reggae and I think Rastafari as well, Rastafari bands, um um known uh pseudonymously as uh Bad Brains, the band called um Bad Brains and um some of y'all know that everything that true Rastafari does is, is great and that just show that even in the rock, so-called rock music, which was invented by black folks and black people, you understand, being that soul people could tap into those, uh, the music of the seers, you know. But anyway, that particular song right there says, have you ever questioned, it begins off and says, have you ever questioned any of the things that you were um, told in school? And then it says uh, something to the effect of teacher, what do you take me for? Do you take me for a fool? Now, that's we we understand the miseducation in this um this uh system of things this Babylonian confusion system of things right now what we want to touch on here briefly within the time that we have allotted to us in this particular segment is what's known as the royal parchment scroll of black supremacy the royal parchment scroll of black supremacy and we can put this under the afro american um uh, churchical Rastafari teachings, and this was by Reverend Fitz Valentine Petersburg, and was written in 1936. And we have a copy of this particular um, book that has been reprinted, and we give thanks to uh, Ross Miguel Lawn for his publication. And I, I don't know if you've seen this before right here if you've seen this particular document before if you have a copy but if you don't we will highly suggest that you uh, should get a copy of this particular book it's one of the foundational books of um, Rastafari so when we're speaking about black um, supremacy this is a foundational work now there's a lot that we that, that we would like to say about this particular book and the first thing we want to do is deal with this particular aspect of um, the message presently, and this is regarding Marcus Messiah Garvey, and something that we actually came across this evening. And looking over a digital copy, was able to download, and we're going to try to offer some of these as PDFs at our website. So look for it, www.lojsociety.org, for the foundational um, teachings and, and, and materials that need to be, you know, need to be studied and need to be researched and referred to, and, and hopefully we can have our own um, academic, if not scholarly, um, reasonings or reasonments on these particular subject matters because the, the issue still remains true. In other words, it's still, you know, the matters still are, are, are true to this very day. Now, what we came across in this particular document concerning um, Marcus Garvey, it struck us at first as a little surprise, and before we came forward or decided to come forward and to do this particular uh, vlog, we said that let's just make sure what we're saying, because some think that we're just, in a sense, picking on Garvey or some might think it's a so-called African-American Rastafari versus so-called Jamaican Rastafari. And none of that is the truth. The truth is concerning the King of Kings and his Christ. That's the only good news. That's the only gospel. If my own mama and papa 
You understand? We're anti His Majesty and anti Rastafari, anti Christ. We will have to separate from them and and or, or reprove them as well. Because He said, if you love mother, father, sister, brother more than me, you're not worthy of me. And and that might be a little bit hard because in another gospel he says you must hate mother and father, sister and brother, so forth and so on. So these things need to be meditated on and need need to be understood in their proper um, context. Now, the matter concerning Garvey within the um, remaining time that we have right here from this, the Royal Parchment Scroll of Black Supremacy, and the author of this work was uh, the African-American, I think, Reverend Fitz the Ballantyne, uh, Petersburg, Petersburg, at least a lot of the inspiration also came from um, um, uh, Atheli and, and, and his, his works as well. There's a couple of works that are contained in this series of important um, reasonings. This is the promise key. They say that this work right here inspired this work by Leonard Percival Howell, The Promise Key. And we consider that these particular brothers, in their own respect, were both more faithful as well as on a certain level greater than Garvey and more significant for the true interpretation of, of Rastafari, the true interpretation of the King of Kings and his Christ. So as he was looking through the Royal Parchment Scroll, of black supremacy, we came across this section, and this is chapter 17, what's called chapter 17, and it concerns speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues. And in, a, in this other digital version, they, 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 they numbered it almost as verses. So this particular version here that's digitalized, and unfortunately right now I can't show this to you um, on the screen as in the other videos, um, but I'll go to the section right here, and it begins at, well, let me just go through um, this particular part right here, because it's pretty short, and both of these are similar, although we appreciate love Ross Miguel Lawn's work right here, because it seems as though he took some time to research some of the background materials concerning this, and the version here seems to, both of them are necessary for study, but this one is probably more accessible. You probably find different websites. We might be offering at our website as well, but we're going to offer the downloadable version, um, whether free or whether for a small gratuity to the society. Um, it should be available very soon. Anyway, this is uh, Chapter 17, Speaking in Tongues. It's Professor Rogers the house of Athelie. It says, one fallen angel told Professor Rogers that his name is, and in parentheses it says, Douglas. And poor Rogers did not know. He was, quote, the principal of hell, end quote. Judge Lucifer, the devil, is no common theologian. He has got Pastor Russell and Judge Rutherford dead fooled with his doctrine called millions living now under Adam, Abraham, Anglo, or Angle, says here, Saxon, the leper, shall never die. Notice, millions living now shall never die. And this is in parentheses. Now, here's coming to the, the penultimate of our point. It says, in 1922, I told Judge Rutherford he must stop preaching lies. The Apostle Paul called them principality. And now we find this in the, in the gospel or the epistle of, of, of Ephesians, Ephesus, to the, to the Ephesians who were located at the place known as Ephesus. It says, now here's the key. It says, the pilot Marcus Garvey, period. The fallen angel, comma, whose name is Lady Astonishment, period. She told Pilot Garvey, comma, that her big universal name is the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League, period. The pilot believed 
the Anglo militant or Anglo militant upside down queen, period. Special notice, period. I am ready to tell you that Lady Creation Vast is black supremacy, period. His and Her Majesty King Alpha and Queen Omega, comma, are black dignitary, period. By Lady Petersburg Equinotical Equinox, founder of Mortal Speech, period. Speak with mortals, comma, not angels, comma. King Alpha and Queen Omega, K dot O dot K dot. And that's some speculate that that is um, a certain kind of an Ethiopian uh, Masonic, in that sense, cipher of the diaspora to say King of Kings, to say King of Kings. Now, that's the, that's the chapter. That's chapter 17. And just to show you this right here, what we was reading you want to look at it and, and slow-mo it or pause it so you can see it for yourself. This is the evidence right here of what we were reading, right? Now, here's the part that really caught our interest, and we had to do a, a little quick, uh, I guess you would call it, um, search on the Internet. Um, I would say Google search, but I don't know if we, if we use Firefox or one of these other kind of um, search things, thingamajigs. Anyway, here where it says in 1922, this is from Reverend Fitz Valentine Petersburg. He says, in 1922, I told Judge Rutherford he must stop preaching lies. Then he says, the Apostle Paul called them principality. And this is from Ephesians, I think, chapter 6, like we fight not against flesh and blood. Um, it says, she told Pilate Garvey, or actually the pilot Marcus Garvey, period, the fallen angel whose name is Lady Astonishment. Now, that's Revelation. Revelation, when, when John, the revelator, um, he looked upon the woman, he was, he was astonished, and, you know, he was amazed by, by this particular woman, speaking of the system that we know as Babylon, because now there's two ladies that are mentioned here. So we have to recall that the one who wrote this was a reverend, just like a lot of the other earlier Rastafari and many of them African American um, preachers and pastors, whether or true preachers of the gospel the, of our Black Lord and Savior, such as Reverend um, James Morris Webb or um, Reverend um, Sterling M. Means, um, and they all wrote, um, they all memorialized their 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 writings and their preaching and their teaching. Of the King of Kings and His Christ. So this is what's significant. This is at a this is at a very early stage of what later would become what we know today as the Rastafari, the Rastafarian movement. Now, here this is written in 1920, I think 26. There's a letter from 1925 affixed to it, and inside it it says in 1922. So we can now um, not just assume but, but um, estimate rightly that these works come from that approximate, that approximate time. Now, here's what's significant, the statements concerning Garvey, because it says that the pilot Marcus Garvey. So the pilot is Marcus Garvey. Now, Many of these things are being spoken in some sense of um, cipher, like in the Rastafari, we know the speech as 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 Iric. You know, we call it we we, we call it Iric, um, even though much of it might be understandable and may not really be true Iric today. You know, Aya 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 sort of speech of Rastafari. A little more detail, of course, than that. But these spoke also and wrote in a certain sort of. Um, cipher or code. Now, here's the key. The key is the Bible, and the key is the, the right um, or correct interpretation of the Bible from an, an, an Ethiopic or Ethiopian or black um, Hebraic um, once lost but now found data Israel approach. And this is the approach that many of the early proclaimers, first proclaimers of Rastafari were were um, 
we're, we're taking towards this this revelation of Rastafari Kadamawi Haile Selassie in these early days. Now, it's interesting to note that it says here that the pilot Marcus Garvey, so Marcus Garvey, he is considered the pilot. Now, if you know the history of Garvey and, and when he came to America and, and what he did and, and in the establishment of UNIA, the Universal Negro Improvement uh, Association, it's interesting because many of those brothers and, and reverends, black, um, African, African-American, African-Caribbean reverends who were preaching and proclaiming this, the first proclaimers of Rastafari, they favored the Ethiopian um, uh, um, um, nomenclature or name for us, and this is based on many of the verses in the Bible, like Amos 9 and 7, aren't you like the Ethiopians unto me, um, the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel, and, and other such places in the scriptures which pointed that connection, whether it's Psalm 68, um, verse 31, Psalm 87, or even we go right to the beginning where Ethiopia is mentioned in the beginning of the Bible or the Ethiopian eunuch, we can go there as well. So there's, there's much testimony to the black presence in the Bible. And many of these pastors and more over reverence, they were teaching this in those early days and time. And this is at the very same time that the, the, the son of man, Lij Teferi, was, was in the world, Aras Teferi, as he was known during these, especially the 1920s, as Aras Teferi. And they made no, um, so as they say, bones about it, you know, they were straightforward with who they were speaking about and why they were speaking about, and they also brought forth heavy, heavy evidence to waking up, to awaken the lost sheep of the Beit Israel, that the, kin, the kinsman redeemer, our kinsman redeemer, according to the Hebraic and biblical understanding of, of how our redemption is supposed to come about, had actually come about. Now, at this particular point, oh, we just thought about something else. Probably have to do this in the second part of it, but it says, Okay, Rutherford, okay, I think we're getting it. Because there's the pilot, Marcus Garvey. So Marcus Garvey was the pilot, right? Then it says the fallen angel, whose name is Lady Astonishment. Now, who's this fallen angel? Lady Astonishment. The, the key connection there is Revelation, with John looking upon the woman. He said that she told pilot Garvey. Garvey, in a sense, was the pilot of this you could say, um, they say the Back to Africa, the black movement of that time. He was the one that everyone, you could say, in a sense, he was elected, in a sense, by the people, the support of the people and the enthusiasm of the people and people willing to follow him. Now, we're going short on time right here, so we're going to have to pick this up in part two. But she told Pilate Garvey that her big universal name is, with this fallen angel, Lady Astonishment, her, her, her universal name is the Universal Negro Improvement Association African uh, Communities League. Then it says that the pilot, who is obviously Garvey, according to the context here, he believed the Anglo milit militant upside down queen. Now, when you look at the, the betrayal of his Imperial Majesty being betrayed by Marcus Garvey, and the so-called Garveyist and the Garveyite movement, it becomes very clear the proper interpretation of this parchment, this royal parchment scroll of black supremacy, that these ones had noticed that Garvey had gone off course, that Garvey had gone astray, and they were trying to signal, you understand, we the black people, concerning that. Now, there's much more to come, my brothers and sisters. Like we said, we're running a little bit um, um, close to the allotted time that we have right here. So please, shalom, rastafari, stay tuned, ya willing, more to come on this very, very important subject matter. So stay tuned. Shalom. <laughs>